and if my hole is at a funny angle, this will help straighten it up. Hello and welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'll be giving you some ideas on how to convert your Oathmark Dwarves with two-handed weapons from left-handed to right-handed. This is a process that requires a little bit of imagination. A big part of it is figuring out which arms to use to get the poses you want. Match the torsos up with the arms on the sprue and picture how you want the weapon held and the model to look. I'll give you five examples to get you started so you can get an idea for the process. All of the figure's torsos have been adjusted in the same way I demonstrated in the previous sculpting video to get more natural poses. The first conversion is by far the simplest and a little bit of a cheat. In their current configuration the arms are great for two-handed thrusting weapons. So let's grab one of the cutter mattocks and simply swap out the head for a more suitable thrusting implement. In this case the shovel head. Depending on what kits you have on hand you could use a spearhead, a pitchfork or the like. As long as it'll offend more than the blunt top of a mattock it'll work. If you've got plastic or metal spears you can drill out the right arm which I'll go over shortly and replace the weapon entirely. Next up let's swap the hands on the axe. So I cut out the axe, the left handed hammer and one of the right bow arms in a release position. I clip off the excess pieces with my flush cutters, in this case the arm attached to the axe and the hammer. And of course the shoulder pads as I'll be sculpting replacements on just like I showed in that previous video. I cut off the bulk of the hand attached to the axe with the flush cutters and then clean up the rest with a knife. My aim is to bring the plastic back to the bare axe handle. This is most easily tidied up by scraping the knife along the axe half to shave off the excess material. Once that's nicely cleaned up, I check the pose to make sure we are headed in the right direction. Hopefully you can see where we're headed too. We have to drill out the left hand to get it to sit on the axe half, so I use my hobby knife to make a little indent on the center of the grip on both sides of the hand. This will help locate the drill bit exactly where it needs to be and stop it from wandering at all. Using a 1mm drill bit, I drill a pilot hole through the hand, making sure I'm drilling nice and straight and central. I like to go about halfway through one side, then finish the hole by drilling in from the other side. This makes sure my holes are located in the correct position, and if my hole is at a funny angle, this will help straighten it up. Once the pilot hole is drilled, I widen the hole using the 1.5mm bit. Take your time here as the plastic is becoming very thin and it is easy to tear it in the wrong place. Once again I drill halfway and then finish the hole from the other side to make sure everything is neat and tidy. Excess plastic between the fingers and palm is removed using the flush cutters and knife. Because in this case the axe half is an odd shape, I remove the thumb and tips of the fingers to make a U shape that will cup the axe, like so. Lining the arm up with the body, we can see that the axe needs to rotate out anti-clockwise to match up with the right arm. So I use a razor saw to cut through the wrist. With the hand on the axe haft, I use a drop of extra thin plastic cement to secure it into position. This dries very quickly and I can then use a flat needle file to tidy up the wrist and add a bevel to adjust how it mates with the arm. When I'm happy with the angle, I glue everything together. Looks good to me. Let's do a maul. I grab the maul, the extended right arm with the sword, and the left bow arm that's at 90 degrees and closer into the body. Once again I get rid of all the parts I don't need with cutter and knife, and drill out the bow and sword hands with the pin vise. The maul handle is cleaned up, just like the axe haft, and we are ready to do some posing. The sword hand should slip onto the maul's handle without too much trouble, but the shoulder joint ends up facing in the wrong direction, 
So using the razor saw, I cut the glove off the arm, leaving the gloved hand attached to the maul. A quick tidy up of the ragged edges with a knife and I repeat the process with the left arm, this time cutting along the wrist. Now we are ready to assemble. I glue the upper right arm in place, checking often to make sure it will line up with the cut glove. When I'm happy with that, I adjust the spacing and angle of the left hand. Because I've not glued the hands in place yet, I can easily adjust their position along the shaft. Checking the position of the left upper arm, I can see that the shoulder needs to be brought in a little. So using a flat needle file, I remove material from the bottom of the join, changing the angle that it meets the torso. Once I'm happy, I'll glue the left arm into place, and then glue on the hands. I'll leave the hands and shaft unglued for now, that way I can adjust the maul's position once the glue has set. Yep, that pose will work nicely. The next one is slightly more complex in that it will require a little bit of sculpting to finish up. I'm going to use the long hammermatic, the shovel left hand, and another releasing right bow arm. Just like before, I cut away all of the excess that I don't need. With a quick look at how the pose is going, I can see that the right hand isn't going to work, so I cut it off using my flush cutters. I'll sculpt on a replacement. I cut the left arm off the glove using the razor saw, as I'll need to rotate it, and then I can glue the upper arms on. I check the pose before gluing the left lower arm back on, palm down. The hammermatic is then glued into place, in the left hand and lightly attached to the top of the right wrist. Once that's had time to fully dry, we'll do some sculpting. Which with the magic of editing, we can do right now. We'll use the standard tools, Procreate Putty, a hobby knife, blade and spoon tool, and the needle tool. Off camera I've attached heads and sculpted on sleeves and whatnot using the techniques shown previously. Basic hands are pretty straightforward to sculpt, especially when they are gloved and holding something, though you can make them much more complex and anatomically correct than I am showing you here. We'll start off with a small rounded rectangle, say 3 by 6 millimeters and stick one end to the wrist behind the weapon haft. We can then roll the putty around the weapon. I then smooth out the transition between the plastic and putty at the wrist, and refine the shape of the hands and fingers. They are a little wide at the moment, so I prod them around and flatten them out until they're in a better shape. If you look at your own hand, when you grip an object like a weapon haft, your fingers bend, creating straightish facets, rather than a gentle curve. We're going to work those facets into the putty by burnishing lightly with the spoon end of the tool. Of course, as we flatten the putty here, it bulges out at the sides. So we'll work back and forth, flattening the facets and managing the width until we are happy with the result. When happy, I grab my hobby knife. Lubricate the blade with a little oil from my skin, and press it in the creases between the fingers. I like to start in the middle, as breaking the fingers in half, and then quarters, is easier to judge than trying to make each finger one at a time. You want to crease about three quarters of the first finger facet, leaving a space for the knuckles, and cut right to the end of the fingers. I then use the needle tool to depress the putty between the knuckles so that they stick out. A little tidying up with a spoon and I can grab some putty for the thumb. This only requires a small sausage which I press on near the figure's wrist, trying to avoid putting my fingerprint into the putty already on the model. I press the end of the sausage into the hand and burnish it out to smooth the transition. The end of the thumb is bent down into a gripping position, and the putty is pressed into place along the weapon shaft. I use the blade tool to help refine the shape, making the bends a bit more angular than fair. 
and tidy everything up by burnishing with the spoon. Finally, the figure is wearing gloves, so I used the needle tool to add in a couple of wrinkles on the back of the hand. It's not my prettiest work, but it'll do. Let's take a quick look at the last example. I'm going to make a horn blower, which is a useful figure to make from any kit. So we'll start with the horn on the edge of the frame, one of the right one-handed axe arms, the left sword arm, and a cutter mattock. Once again, everything gets cleaned up and the excesses are removed, including taking off the right hand. The left hand gets drilled out, and I grab a head from the sprue to match the horn with, and glue it onto the torso. The right arm is filed to adjust the angle it attaches on, and everything is glued together. Too easy. When that's dry, we'll sculpt on a new hand just like the previous example. When the conversions are finished, I reckon they look pretty good. In terms of painting, I used the same process that I showed on the border guard, but made the outer clothing much more colourful and varied. I hope that's helped out. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we shall see you next time. Cheers!